let's begin because they're going after Kamala now. So, whew. and then the smoke got me. So, Kamala, a Baptist with a Jewish husband. I did not know she was a Baptist. Did not have a clue that woman was Baptist at all. Where is the story? Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong story then. Never mind. Uh, let's let's forget about that then. I thought I had another story on Kamala, but all I see is uh, what's this dude's name? Little Ray. is that Little Rail? I don't know. I'm all they all look the same to me because they're just boring. Hey, Jen, girl, I've been wondering where your ass has been. Missed you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, what you call it? That um, that reference letter. I put it on my website as well. So thank you so much. It really helped me out. So now I have, if you aren't aware, if you're not in my discord and you're just interested, I applied for artistic uh, housing certification. I sent it to the city I live in. And then I sent it to my hometown city, which is Boston. And I was, uh, um, I was uh, approved. So now I have access to housing places that are set aside for artists. I cannot wait to see what might be there because I'm really very, very nervous about uh, my, my living situation. And I really am not trying to live in a car with two kittens with old lady names. But anyways, look at this shit here. So someone read 2025. I've already gotten a speech ready. I'm just trying to pull like... Um, some images and stuff, some graphics so that I can do my deep dive in it. But someone read it and they got 10 ways. This is going to hurt a lot of us melanated people. So here we go, y'all. Hold on. Eventually we'll get, well, you in the damn, are you in the discord server? I'll tell you that. I ain't never seen you actively on, but you there. So, um, this person read it. This was on the 15th. I wish I had a got, a, uh, got a hold of it. I might have read it before, but hell, let's go over it again. Shit. I'm just going over exactly what's wrong with it, and then I'll do my deep dive. So this dude went over it. We're not going too much into it. I might have done this before, but hey, I don't mind reminding people. So let me show. 10, uh, make the government white again. You will not live like that. Thank you so much. Every black person has a cousin or aunt who works in the federal government. While the civilian federal workforce is disproportionately white at the highest level, in March 2021, uh, excuse me, uh, nearly half, 46.7 percent of low-level government employees were non-white. In fact, African American government workers are overrepresented in the federal in the federal government. This is what the swamp that Trump wants to drain. The fundamental principle guiding this pro-white uh, project is a plan to embed conservative-minded political appointees, pronounce white pe people, that's what they wrote, not me, uh, throughout the federal government. However, it is illegal to discriminate based on race, ethnicity, or political affiliation. Trump's deputy secretaries can't ask prospective workers if they have accepted Donald J. the jackass uh, as their lord and savior so how do you plan to draft a million of maga workers into the federal workforce that's one of them let's see here now nine they will fight racism against white people according to caucasian race theory racism against white people is destroying america while the federal government has little to do with local school curriculum project 2025 alleges that the bureaucrats of the department of education inject ross's anti-american historical propaganda into American classrooms, which is why the so-called small government conservatives plan to defund black history. Both plans uh, vow to get rid of anti-white indoctrination, affirmative action, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and especially the dreaded critical race theory. So basically, we're going to lie some more. Those who subscribe to the theory believe that racism, in this case, treating individuals differently based on race, is appropriate, necessary even, making the theory more than merely an analytical tool to describe race in public and private life, explains Project 2025's chapter on education. Ultimately, this is how the MAGA government will fulfill Agenda's 47's pledge that President Trump will cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate race, racial, sexual, or political content on our children. These motherfuckers here. Uh, number eight, 
They actually have a plan to stop anti-Black racism. To be fair, Trump and his allies do have a compre uh, comprehensive plan to address the white supremacy, homophobia, and transgender discrimination. As much as it pains me to admit, their strategy to erase racism throughout America is pretty brilliant. They are going to officially erase races. And they put that up there before they try to take it down. Uh, yeah, so basically we ain't gonna have no more races. That's what they're saying. They're gonna get rid of race. I don't know what the hell plan you got, but that don't sound right. Here we have the next administration would work with Congress to amend Title uh, 7 to prohibit the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission from collecting EEO data and any other racial class uh, classifications in employment for both private and public workplaces. So that basically means that you can, uh, do a lot of discrimination. You ain't got to hire black people because it's not on the data. They don't know how many black people are there. You need just maybe one or two bootlickers and that's all you'll need, just letting you know. Number seven, get tough on black crime. Go easy on white cops. If you're a person who exists in America, you've undoubtedly heard of a person who owns a pair of wraparound sunglasses, use FBI data to explain why black people commit more crimes. While I've written extensively how white supremacists love to misinterpret these FBI statistics, you can read it on that page. This is the only agency in the entire federal government where Trump's policies, Trump, uh, wants to collect more racial data. The National Crime Victimization Survey is of political importance, explains Project 2025. The demographic information that crime victims uh, provide enables such reports as race and ethnicity of violent crime offenders and arrestees 2018 and finds that police are arresting those who are, according to victims, actually commit crimes. What the fuck did I just read? I got to read that again later. Whew. I'm not staying too long on that. Uh, let's see, make Jesus white again. Much of uh, Project 2025 and Agenda 47 policies are based on what they call America's Judeo-Christian tradition, stretching back to Genesis. While you're figuring out how American tradition stretches back to biblical times, check out a few of their Jesus-based policies. They will, pass, they will pass a law stating the only genders recognized by the U.S. government are male and female, and they are assigned at birth. The Department of Labor will recognize that God ordained the Sabbath as a, re a day of rest. But what day is it? I celebrate uh, the Sabbath on Saturday. I'm just telling you because it's a seven God dang day and I don't worship sun gods. Just telling you. Uh, the Department of Labor will recognize that. OK, I said that Trump will delete. Trump will delete the term sexual orientation, gender diversity, equity, inclusion, equality, equity, abortion, uh, reproductive health, reproductive rights and any other terms used to deprive Americans of their First Amendment rights out of federal rule, agency regulation, contract grants, regulation and piece of legislation that exists. We're going all the way back to the goddamn Puritans, y'all. Uh, make abortion impossible. Allow Christian schools to use federal education funds with no oversight or curriculum regulation. Protect churches' tax-exempt status of churches, even if they engage in discrimination or partisan political activity. Nope, they certainly don't. Uh, protect, uh, let's see here now, exempt Christian colleges, employers, and healthcare facilities from anti-discrimination policies and government regulations. In other words, you're going to have a lot of uh, all-white Christian schools. Agenda 47 also insists that Trump will be a champion for the fundamental right to pray in school. The Muslim ban will be reinstated. Make abortion impossible. Five, why a welfare for white people, poverty for blacks. Hasn't it always been that way? Anyways, white conservatives claim they have they want to reduce government spending. Their budget cuts will not disrupt the government handouts for white people. Perhaps their significant push for white welfare is disguised as school choice. Under their plan, people can pay to send their children to disport disproportionately white private Christian schools with tax taxpayers' dollars. Parents who send children and college students to these schools will also receive tax credit and have access to taxes and education savings accounts. Agenda 47 will also also force education accreditation organizations to certify uncredited right-wing Christian institutions that can't meet 
educational standards. However, Agenda 47 will reclaim our great educational institutions from the radical left and Marxist maniacs by stripping liberal colleges of their academic credentials. As they dismantle the left-wing social engineering agenda, they will also provide subsidi subsidies for cops, truckers, farmers, and real estate developers. When it comes to Black people, here's a quick list of programs that will be cut or reduced. Food stamps, uh, the National Public Radio, PBS, school lunches, student loans, black home owners. While nearly three out of four white own Americans own a home, there has never been a nanosecond in Americans' history when the black ownership rate reaches 50 percent. A second Trump uh, administration will continue this trend by dismantling programs designed to increase black home ownership and ending other uses of special purposes credit authorities to further equity. Yes, it is the new world order. I've been paying attention to that shit. This is ridiculous. They want to increase their population since they are leaving Earth. They need to. Anyways. And I mean, the people like this, I'm not saying the race, I'm saying the people like this, black schools will be worse. Most uh, black children attend a majority black schools that are underfunded. Even when compared to the poorest white school districts, part of this uh, disparity is made up by the Department of Education's Title I program, which provides supplemental financial assistance to school districts for children from low income families. Not under Trump's administration, not going further into that, uh, they want to go backward. Project 2025 and Agenda 47 don't just plan to advance a new conservative agenda. They also want to reverse any gains towards equality and justice. Aside from eliminating agency level civil rights offices, they will repeal uh, policies on the LGBTQ rights, gender affirming care and racial discrimination. They will rescind the data collection provision that uh, creates access to capital for black owned businesses. The diversity visa. Tell me you racist while telling me you racist. Shit, this is fucked up. The diversity visa lottery will be repealed, as will nearly every environmental regulation. So we definitely will have some more cancer alleys in Louisiana. Every loan program in the Department of Education will be abolished, not modified. Medicare policies that uh, benefit individual users instead of corporations will be reversed. Federal contractors will no longer have to pay fair market wages. Oh, Lord Jesus. President Trump will end the leftist takeover of school discipline and the juvenile system. He will order the Departments of Justice and Education to overhaul federal standards on disciplining minors to get violent thugs out of our children's classrooms so they want so they can get the professional help they need. When the troubled youth are out of control, the consequences must be swift, certain, and strong. You guys are fucking animals. The quiet part, number two, the quiet part out loudly. Uh, because disguising racism is something impractical, Agenda 47 and Project 25 don't try to hide all of the racism with dog whistles. For, inst for instance, an entire section labeled the Equity Agenda accused the Biden administration of dastardly planning to create several new offices to promote equity. Ooh, that's so bad, you jackasses. These policies must be forcefully opposed and reversed, reads Project 2025. This motherfucker better never get in office, I swear to God. I swear. Uh, and number one, Project 2025 is not Trump dependent. One of the underreported aspects of Project 2025 is that it is not just dependent on Trump's election. Many of the provisions require uh, Republican majorities in the Senate and House. And by the way, they've already started working on this bitch, if you didn't know. So I'm just letting you know. Get ready for this bullshit. It's sick. But anyways, let's move on. Um, yeah, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to knock out a few things here now. Let's see. No, we don't really need that. I wanted to do that, but we don't have time. But I can give you something educational before we move into the uh, next stories. So let me get rid of this, too. Let me see. Oh, man. No, I don't need that one. I'll get rid of that. And what's that? Um, yeah, I'll talk about that. And I'll talk about that and I'll talk about that. OK, so let's do something educational and then we'll wrap up with the last stories I have. There are a few, but they're not that long. So let's go. Oh, where's my god dang commercial? Damn it, damn it, damn it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay. Uh, there it is right there. That is wrong. Hey, Mama G. It's just me and the fam. It's just me and the fam. It's just me and the fam. It's just me and the... It's just me and the fam. Yeah, yeah. It's just me and the fam. See my little Tay Tay, that's mine, girl, that's my mascot. No one's go for houses, the hours till we pass out. Stay inside the house, turn up with the racks out. Stay inside the house, turn. 
So as always, like I said, please uh, subscribe. Uh, I don't have a membership yet. I haven't gotten that big. Um, share all that good stuff. Um, we moving on into the, oh, I did the wrong one. Sorry. Here we go. Educational. Damn, I'm stupid. Uh, yeah, so many, hey, so many, yeah, so many, shits. yo, it's so many lies, look in my eyes, they know I'm the truth, and I'm knocking them down every time I step in the booth, uh -huh. we ain't got a lie, they know the vibe, we living in proof, it's young content, shoot my life a movie, I live in a school, uh -huh. ain't no sticking around, I'm on the move, I'm checking the dose, yeah, it's dope. only us too, so you know we copping that coke, mm -hmm. yeah. we on the road, smoking dope, look at the view, uh -huh. used to chill on the stove, now we out here breaking the nose, uh -huh. it ain't shit true. All right, so how photographer Frank Stewart captured the culture of jazz, church, and black life in the U.S. This was reported today, and Pennsylvania, at first glance, it looks like an aerial photo of a cemetery destroyed by war with charred coffins ripped from broken concrete vaults and arched marble tombstones flattened by a bomb blast. Where the hell is that picture? I need to know this. Where's the picture? It better be down here. Oh, it's down there. Oh, no, I guess. Then the viewer begins to discern details. The coffins and vaults are actually parts of a keyboard. Instead of the names and dates, the apparent tombstones are inscribed with words like vibrato and third harmonic. It looks like a graveyard, photographer Frank Stewart said. Commercial. Stewart's ghostly photo uh, photograph of New Orleans church organ ravaged by the floodwaters of Hurricane Katrina is part of a career retrospective of his decades, documenting black life in America and exploring African and Caribbean cultures. Where's the picture? Stewart's uh, Nexus, an American photographer journey 1960 to the present, is on display at the Brandywine Museum of Art Thursday, uh, through September 22nd. Brandywine is the fourth and final stop for the exhibition, which was organized by the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C. and the Tail Fair Museum in Savannah, Georgia. I, want to, I wanted to talk about Black church and what influence they had on culture, Stewart said in his post-Katrina work in New Orleans. This organ, the music, and everything corresponds. It all comes together. I just wanted to show the devastation of churches and the music and the culture. I wish they would show a picture of it. Okay, this is a photo of the, Bandy, uh, the Brandy Wine uh, Conservative, very historical Black area. Music is elemental to Stewart's practice. He was a longtime photographer for Savannah Music Festival, and for 30 years, he was a senior staff photographer for jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra, which paired with his artistic Grammy uh, director and Grammy-winning musician, Wynton Marsalis. He's like my brother, said uh, Stewart, whose exhibition includes Stomping the Blues, a 1997 pho photograph of Marcellus leading the orchestra off the stage during the world tour of his Pulitzer Prize winning Jazz Ontario, Blood on the Fields. That's the picture right there. Let me scroll up here and see if that goddamn picture ever popped up. Because I'm still looking for it. God dang it, I want to look for it. If, if I can't find it, I'm going to look for it on the internet because I want to see what it looks like. That sounds absolutely interesting. Let's see here. Let me pull. Let me let me uh, copy this uh, title. Let's see here now. This is what happens when you have to. Okay, I'm just copy that title. And if I don't see the picture in this story, I'm gonna go look it up somewhere else. All right. So that's the picture right there. Uh, let's see here now. Um, Stewart, who was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and grew up in Memphis, Tennessee. And Chicago has his own ties to jazz and blues. His stepfather, Phineas Newborn Jr., was a pianist who worked with the likes of musician Lionel Hampton, Charles Mingus, and B.B. King. I met B.B. King. If you want to know about that, check out my uh, story time because I met him when I was three. It was, it was, I don't know what to tell you. Describing himself as a child of the apartheid South, Stewart has drawn uh, inspiration from photographers such as Ernest Cole, Roy De, uh, De, Carva, uh, De Carava, who was among Stewart's instructors at New York's Cooper Union, where Stewart received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. De Carva's photograph of 1950s Harlem led to a collaboration with Langston Hughes on the 1955 book, The Sweet Fly Paper of Life. And here's a picture. Uh, this is him right here, Frank Stewart. 
Uh, Cole, a South African photographer, achieved acclaim in 1967 with The House of Bondage, the first book to inspire Stewart. It, crown it chronicled apartheid using photographs he smuggled out of the country. Cole was never able to replicate his early success and fell on hard times before dying at age 49 in New York City. That is sad. A documentary about him, Ernest Cole, Lost and Found, premiered at this year's Cannes Film Festival. He came to New York and he was homeless in New York, so I would see him on the street and we would talk, said Stewart, who is quick to draw a distinction between his and Cole's work. I consider myself an artist more than a documented, uh, documentarian, explained Stewart, who attended the School of uh, the Art Institute of Chicago before enrolling, enrolling at Cooper Union and was a longtime friend and collaborator of artist Romar Varian. Okay, all right, there it is, there it is. This is the picture. God dang you. I would never have considered. I know what it is. I would have never thought of tombstones. I would have never thought of a bomb. I would have seen it as the, or maybe because I always had to go to a church with a Gorgon in it. But um, that's the picture. And, um, you know, it's one of those pictures that I feel like you really need to think about it to look at it. Um, glad I didn't have to go look, up, look it up because I was expecting more than that. But I still appreciated it. 